Hey quad bros, what's going on guys? Welcome back or welcome to the channel if you're new. This is going to be the first of my series of faction guides in Enlisted and where better to start than my personal favorite faction in Enlisted, the Western Allies. I'm going to be going through the entire allied tech tree and giving my thoughts on the best weapons and vehicles and where you should be spending your hard earned silver. If this advice helps you guys out, be sure to leave a comment down below with some of your own advice to new players and like and subscribe while you're down there as well. Now let's jump into it with Tier 1 of the Allies. Tier 1 and 2 for the Allies is going to find you fighting in a wide variety of theaters, including Tunisia, the Pacific, and Normandy. Right off the bat, guys, you're going to want to research the boys' AT rifle to get access to some very basic anti-tank capabilities. Now, while the boys' AT rifle is very weak, it's still better to have something and some basic tools to fight enemy vehicles as opposed to nothing at all. And the boys is still decent at shooting out the tracks of enemy vehicles, allowing you to finish them off with an explosive pack or gun them down as they get out to repair. Be sure to use your new anti-tank squad very early on and often, since you're going to replace it later and you're going to want to level it up so your anti-tank soldiers are going to be able to be max level for your other squads. Next up, make sure to grab the M50 Rising Medic Squad to give yourself some much needed automatic firepower. You're not going to use this squad for very long and once you get Assaulters we'll swap them out, but it's still good to have them and to give you some much needed firepower. After that, we're going to want to continue to the infield P14, which is going to give us the most important squad in Enlisted, the Engineers. This squad is going to allow you to build rally points, anti-tank guns, and other fortifications to help assault and defend objectives. It doesn't matter what squad you guys remove to slot in these engineers, but you definitely need to slot them in. At this point, you probably have some likely favorites that you have, uh, so just swap out whichever one you guys don't want to use. But again, make sure you have the engineers. They're incredibly important to winning matches and contributing to your team. And this is going to form our staple loadout. Some sort of vehicle, an engineer, medics, and another squad of your choice. Now as for weapons, the default M1903 Springfield is a serviceable enough rifle, but both the USMC variant and the Enfield P14 are cheap alternatives if you want to invest the silver for them. We won't be picking up another mainline rifle until the M1 Carbine, which is a bit down the road, so any silver you spend on new rifles isn't going to be totally wasted. Now for SMGs, I recommend picking up the Sten. I think the Sten is a very underrated gun in Enlisted, and is actually one of the better SMGs that we can unlock until we get the Lanchester and Thompsons in Tier 3 and 4. Now that we've got a stable footing, we've got a lot of options on where we want to go with our progression. For vehicles, the M8 Scott is a great vehicle to work towards, given its 75mm howitzer can do some serious infantry support, and its heat isn't too bad at fighting a lot of enemy vehicles. If you're not really feeling tanks, the Allies do have some of the best planes in all of Enlisted, but many of them are very late in the tech tree. Early on, both the SBD Dauntless and the Spitfire are good options for anyone looking to learn the ropes of flying before you get to the late war planes. As for infantry combat, you're going to want to pick up an M1 Bazooka as early as possible in Tier 2. The M1 can deal with just about any tank the Germans or Japanese can muster and is very, very easy to use. This is a huge upgrade over the boys' AT rifle. Make sure to upgrade your squads and slot in anti-tank soldiers whenever you can. This is going to make it to where any time you run to an enemy vehicle, you can quickly switch to the anti-tank soldier, launch an M1 bazooka into the ammo rack, and take it down, earning you a nice little bucket of XP. Now once you're in tier 2, you're also going to be able to unlock the first machine gun squads. While these aren't very great, the British Bren guns aren't the best weapons in the game, they offer more mid-range firepower compared to some machine gun squads that you already have unlocked. Also, on top of that, engineers inside these machine gun squads can also build the powerful Browning M250 cal, which is great at dishing out some serious damage in-game, and can even penetrate and destroy many enemy vehicles. Tier 2 also gives you access to the Assaulter class when you unlock the M3A1 Grease Gun. Now, the Grease Gun isn't a big improvement over the Sten, but the Assaulter squad itself is a big upgrade to your aging medics. Not only do Assaulters have better perks and perk points, but the Assaulter Squad itself can also bring a much wider variety of soldiers like Engineers and Anti-Tank Soldiers. For Rifles, you're going to want to pick up the M1 Carbine. 
The M1 Carbine is one of the only semi-automatic rifles available to low BR players, and it will give all of your squads a serious firepower advantage over your enemies, especially the Germans. Now keep in mind that the M1 Carbine does trade raw damage for rate of fire and will lose out to bolt actions when you're fighting at longer ranges. But at the same time, they have some serious firepower at close range, and giving M1 Carbines to your entire engineer squad can turn them into a pseudo assault squad. Be sure to adapt your tactics accordingly, though. Finally, for Tier 2, we're going to want to get the Studebaker 6. This squad is an APC squad, which acts as a mobile rally point. Not only will this earn you some extra score and XP for spawning your teammates, but also allow you to get back into the fight that much faster. As we finish out Tier 2, our squad setup can look pretty radically different compared to other players based on what we prefer. Just keep in mind that as long as you're bringing some way to keep spawning your team closer to an objective like an engineer or the Studebaker, then you should be doing just fine. And now we move on to, unfortunately, the dog days of the Allies, Tier 3 and Tier 4. Tier 3 is pretty far and away the worst tier for the Allies, and arguably the worst tier of any faction in the game. Now, while weapons here aren't really the worst, they typically just don't stack up compared to options for your opponents. The Lee Enfield number 4 is clearly the best bolt action in the entire game, but you don't really want to buy a ton of these since you're going to end up replacing them with the M1 Garand later. And yes, it is the best bolt action, but that's it's not by a wide margin, and you can get by with just Springfields. And it is a very expensive weapon to pick up on top of that. For sniper players, however, the Lee Enfield Sniper is a fantastic pickup and is one of the shining pieces of BR3. So if you enjoy sniping and you want to pick up a powerful, arguably the best uh, sniper rifle in all of Enlisted, certainly pick this up. It won't get outclassed by the M1 Garand later on. We also first get access to the Browning Automatic Rifle, or the BAR, which, as it was historically, is mediocre. This gun is by no means bad, and in fact, I really do love this gun but compared to something like the mg34 that german players are going to be unlocking later on it does leave a lot to be desired if you do choose to use the bar make sure to use it more like a big assault rifle rather than an actual long range or medium range machine gun heavy weapons also see a small bump in this tier with the m9 bazooka and the M9 is fine, and it can take out enemy vehicles from the side, but that does require you to flank, and oftentimes that's simply not possible. And at the same time, it's just nowhere near the level of the Panzerfaust that the Germans are going to be picking up at the same time. Regardless, this is the best handheld AT that you're going to have for the rest of the game, at least at the time of this video, so stock up. The first flamethrower is also available at this BR, or this tier, excuse me. But they're pricey, and the M1 Flamethrower isn't particularly good. Don't invest too much into that squad, but you can pick up the M2 Flamethrower once we get to Tier 4. For all of you tank lovers out there, we get our first Sherman variant at this tier. Hooray! If you get down-tiered into BR1 and 2 while using the Sherman, you're going to be basically unstoppable. But on the flip side, if you get up-tiered, your Sherman is going to be about as effective as a paper roof during a hurricane. It's not going to be useful in any way, shape, or form. On the bright side, the Sherman 75 HE is absolutely incredible with its high rate of fire and crazy amounts of explosives packed into that shell. And it's perfect for infantry support because it does also come with smoke shells. For plain players, keep grinding away, guys. I promise you it will pay off, but not too soon. As we move into Tier 4, things start to pick up a bit, but not by a ton. First off, guys, I hope you like Thompsons, because if you don't, you're probably not going to be using many submachine guns as the allies in high tier. Of all the Thompson variants, the M1928A1, excuse me, uh, or the M1 Thompson are your best bets. For rifles, the glorious ping machine, the M1 Garand, has finally arrived. This is a massive upgrade from the M1 carbine or bolt-action rifles that you've been using, and you should definitely outfit all of your soldiers that use rifles with as many of these as possible. Don't worry about the Johnson rifle later on in this tier. It's a pretty tiny upgrade and is really not worth the silver investment. The same goes for the Johnson LMG. Poor Johnson. He made good guns, but unfortunately they just weren't as good as our good friend John Browning or whoever made the M1 Garand. I'm not sure. Leave a comment if you know who made the M1 Garand off the top of your head. 
Now, technically, again, the the Johnson rifle is better, but not by a large enough margin to warrant a silver investment. Spend that somewhere else, like on the M10 GMC. The M10 is the first tank that's going to be able to frontally pin the Panther and the Tiger tank, giving you a good way to fight back against the German big cats. The Jumbo Sherman also offers a huge armor upgrade while still retaining the beautiful high explosive uh, packed shells of the 75 millimeter cannon. So that is also a direct upgrade for all of you tankers out there. Plane players, the end is in sight for you. Both P-38 variants and Tier 4 are great planes, but what we truly want is coming up right around the corner. As we break into Tier 5 for the Allies, we really start to get going. We get three major upgrades. The first, the M2 Carbine. The M2 Carbine is an absolute monster, and you should be getting one on every single soldier you can. I've thought that the M2 Carbine is one of the best guns in all of Enlisted, and that was before they buffed it two times. Now, yes, this thing does have high recoil, so you're going to make sure uh, to utilize recoil reduction perks to go along with it, but this thing is the answer to the, to the STG. Except, the STG can only be equipped on Assaulters, and we get to equip it on everybody. Seriously, guys, this gun is insane. You can just use three infantry squads who all have M2 carbines, and I think that you would be bringing a very competitive lineup to the game. Next up, a big upgrade to machine gunners here. No longer do you have to reload after killing just two people like you do with the BAR. The M1919A6 is somehow the first true machine gun that the Allies have, and boy, oh boy, guys, does it put in work. If you've been craving some medium range firepower, then there's no further you have to look. The 30 cal is a fantastic upgrade over the BAR. Finally, the two stars of the show, guys. The absolute foundations of the allied high tier effort. The moment that you guys have all grinded your butts off for. The P-47 and the AP-4C Corsair. Guys, these two planes make up the absolute tippy top of all planes in Enlisted, and frankly, it ain't even close. Alright, the Corsair itself brings eight HVAR rockets for close air support, making it arguably the second best close air support vehicle in the entire game, while simultaneously being one of the best fighters in the entire game. The P-47, on the other hand, brings 10 HVARs and a 500-pound bomb to boot, and at the same time, just like its brother the Corsair, is a pretty decent fighter in the air as well, being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most fighters in Enlisted. Just one of these planes being in the air strikes fear into anyone out there in a German Tiger tank, and the fact that both of these planes can be in your lineup and be up at the same time is truly one of the most busted and horrifying things in all of Enlisted. Unfortunately, that power does come at a price. Top tier allied tanks like the 76mm Sherman leave so much to be desired. Even the M26 Pershing, the heavy tank for the Allies, is barely able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the King Tiger, and is really only evenly matched against vehicles like the Panther, which is a BR-4 or Tier 4 vehicle for the Axis. If a King Tiger does show up, guys, the answer is not a Sherman. It is a 500-pound bomb or an HVAR barrage from the air. Unfortunately, the Sherman, while still maintaining its good anti-infantry and its good uh, infantry support role is simply not on par with most of the German vehicles that you'll be running into. Well, guys, that is it. That's the entire Allied tech tree from start to finish. I'm sure I missed some stuff, and so if I did, what did I miss? Leave a comment down below, all of you veteran Allied players out there. What advice do you guys have for new players that are grinding out the Allies? Let me know down in the comments, and remember, as always, to like and subscribe for more enlisted guides, tips, tricks, uh, news, and gameplay. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy.